We'll go to the first talk straight away. So hierarchy builder, algebraic hierarchy is made easy in Coq with LP. Uh, this talk is, is given by Cyril Cohen, who'll uh, share his video. And then uh, uh, we can ask uh, Cyril and Enrico, uh, Enrico questions they can answer. Please put your questions in the chat. Yeah, Cyril, the floor is yours. Uh, Thank you. So uh, I will play a pre-recording of myself and uh, Tetsuhiko Sakaguchi is also here to answer the question in the end. Oh, as well. Uh, okay. Let me play it now. Hello, let me present uh, a hierarchy builder, a tool to make hierarchies of structures easier in COC using LP. So the system we present here has been elaborated and coded in collaboration with Katsuhiko Sakaguchi and Enrico Tassi, but the concept and target infrastructure are the result of numerous fruitful discussions over the years with Georges Gontier and Asya Mabubi, and also Florent Hiver and people from Dax Tool Seminar uh, uh, 18341, as well as many Coq and MathCom developers and users. The basic uh, building block of a hierarchy is a structure. Uh, in mathematical logic, it's usually presented as three pieces of data. The first piece is a carrier, represented as a type or a set, depending on the meta theory. The second piece is uh, made of constants and operators involving the carrier. And the third piece are proofs that these uh, satisfy an axiomatic uh, of the theory of the structure uh, at hand. A classical example is the one of a monoid, which can be represented in dependent type theory in the following way. First, the carrier as an element of type type, then the neutral element as an element of the carrier, and addition as a binary operation, a binary law on the carrier. Uh, we consider here a uh, monoid with an additive notation. So last comes three proof, proofs that show the properties we expect monoid laws to have and neutral elements to satisfy. Associativity for the addition and the fact that the neutral element is actually a neutral. Of course, there are other possible representation. Uh, the most obvious, one, uh, obvious alternative is to regroup all the axioms into one conjunction. So now let's see four, uh, four representations that can be used in the in real world libraries. And I will all present them in Cox syntax, but they, they would be equally valid in uh, any dependency type uh, programming uh, language or proof assistance, uh, as long as it has dependent types. So the first encoding is traditionally called unbundled classes. Uh, if you want more details, you can see type classes for mathematics in type theory published in MSCS in 2011. Uh, it's called that way because the carrier, uh, the constants and operations are uh, parameters of the record and not fields. So they must be given on the side and the, the record regroups only the axioms. Uh, additionally, the record is usually called a class here because all implementations relying on it are actually turning this record into a type class. So the second encoding is called semi-bundled class because uh, the carrier is still not a field, so it's not fully bundled, it's semi-bundled, uh, but the constants and operators are fields of the record. There are still variations of this. For example, if we consider a group, we can define it from scratch by including the monoid fields in it. But another way to do it is to represent the, the monoid as a parameter. So it means now a uh, group of monoid is not like its group. It's Now it's uh, a predicate on monoid rather than a predicate on a type. So to my knowledge, there is no canonically good choice here. And the definitions may vary accordingly to the contents of the hierarchy and the subtleties of unification and uh, resolution in front of the proof assistant at hand. So a third encoding I show, I call it bundled record because it's 
this time the carrier is packaged with uh, the recall and this representation regroups all instances of uh, a given structure as element of a record type which makes it possible to see elements as uh, or to see this type as the type of object of a category if one wishes to so the third encoding i want to talk about now is called packed classes and if you want more details about it you can uh, have a look at the packaging mathematical structure paper from tphol 2009 and it actually unifies the two later uh, two later encodings by uh, regrouping constants and operators in the class in a separate record that is named a class and packaging uh, the, into a second record the class with the carrier. So in this setting, classes are always a predicate on type uh, and are fully and fully characterize the structure, not like the uh, group of monoids uh, class we've seen before. So um, other records such as, uh, such as uh, actually group of monoids are actually called mixins and are not promoted to the rank of classes uh, uh, since they require other classes. And in order to form a class now, we regroup uh, classes and mixins together. Here is group, regroup is monoid, the class of monoids, and the mixing group of monoids, the extra structure one needs to form a group from a monoid, uh, together with this uh, is monoid class to form the is group class, which fully characterizes uh, the, the group uh, class. And after that, we can again pack this class with a carrier and form the group type, the type of all groups. Uh, of course, there are also implementations, other implementations. Uh, some of them are known to be either impractical or inefficient or even useless. Uh, and as a newcomer, it, it could be very hard to understand why at first sight and which one to pick. So, as for concurrency implementation, the mathematical components library uses packed classes. The math classes library, in, uh, also in COC, uses fully unbundled records and also provides a special variant for universal algebras. And the lean mathlib library uses semi bundled records. Uh, Agda standard library uses both semi and fully bundled variants. However, most representations makes sense only with uh, appropriate tooling like canonical structures for packed classes or type classes for fully bundled or semi-bundled uh, records. So this is uh, the first level of tooling but uh, unfortunately it's not the only level to, on tooling of tooling and one needs much more than just an inference mechanism to make uh, hierarchies of structure work. For example, in MathComp, there is a lot of boilerplate and uh, even the need for a validator now, which is presented at FSCD by Katsuhiko Sakaguchi. Uh, and without it, it becomes impossible nowadays to extend the hierarchy. Uh, to a lesser extent, uh, there is a need for boilerplate and uh, maybe more hints or priority priorities or external checkers or internal checkers or, or metaprogramming tools to make uh, hierarchies uh, in any proof assistant work to our knowledge. So since none of these encoding are, are, are straightforward, we claim that in the current state of affairs, it's difficult, it's very difficult for a non-expert to come up with a definition of a hierarchy or using an existing hierarchy beyond basic instantiations without typing more characters than they wish they, they, they could and without encountering well-known well problems uh, that the experts would know about. So we intend Hierarchy Builder to be a domain-specific language to generate and maintain libraries according to a fixed given design pattern. Uh, first, let's try to see the requirements uh, for hierarchy beyond the mere contents of the, the of the structure of records. 
So the main purpose, uh, the main purpose is, is to have uh, generic theorems uh, about the structure and to be able to retrieve known uh, structure information from given carriers or, or operations sometimes. So we should be able to also add new instances, new structures in various places, whether uh, it's in between two, sp two, two structures or to close a diamond. Amendments uh, might be done by rewriting code or by uh, writing new independent code that can be plugged in, uh, just imported to fix a library. So it's, uh, it depends on uh, very much on the technology. So moreover, the, the, we, we wish uh, that there are several ways to instantiate a mixing. As we've seen before, there might be multiple ways to give an axiomatic. Uh, we want uh, that uh, instance inference is predictable. We, might not, we do not want to have several ways, uh, several possible instances for the same carrier uh, given silently because it would confuse the user. And we want the code to be robust with regard to new declarations. So the the purpose of a hierarchy builder here in two bullets is to provide a domain specific language to generate and extend a hierarchy from minimal inputs. So to make uh, the life of the user easier. And the second objective uh, of a hierarchy builder is to be able to amend the hierarchy without breaking client code. So more precisely, the generated design patterns conform to the packed class methodology, but no one has to know really because it will all be hidden uh, under the hood. And user declaration consists mostly of mixings and factory declaration, which are the basic extensions and compatibility blocks of the language. Thanks to this tool, uh, we can perform additional checks and uh, perform them on abstract representations rather than on the encoding themselves as, is, as, is, as it is done uh, nowadays. A hierarchy must relate uh, structures. So it's not just structures uh, in isolation, it's structures in relation with each other. And automation must be aware of this relation. Uh, these relations uh, are of two uh, nature. The first nature is extension, like a group is uh, a monoid extended with extra laws and, and properties. A ring is uh, a group uh, together with a monoid and extra properties, and so on and so forth. And um, another family of, of, uh, of relation between structure is uh, the relation between a norm space and a metric space, for example, where uh, the distance uh, is induced by the norm or the topology is induced by the distance. So if I uh, try to to see that in um, in two categories, we have uh, extensions which add operation axiom and so on, and induction or entailment or generalization which uh, do not uh, uh, obviously uh, uh, add uh, more operators. So here is a, a, a simplified. Um, snapshot of a subset of the hierarchies one can find in mass comp, uh, mass comp analysis. And roughly the algebraic structures uh, follow the extension scheme and the calculus structure uh, follow the uh, in induction scheme. Uh, but it's not always clear. And um, if we look more precisely at what uh, each family, uh, what each family implies, uh, we see that they have pros and cons, and that the frontier is not so uh, clear. So, on one side, uh, we have the first kind of arrow, structure extensions, which are very compositional, because it means we can reuse previous structures to define new structures. We can reuse pre-existing instances to define new instances. 
Uh, but it's also noisy because the internal definition of a structure might change if you insert a new structure in between. Indeed, if you redefine a structure, every stru structure that, ex that extended it inherits this modification. So it's very unstable. So it, it's also not robust because of that, because when you add an intermediate structure, you change the representation of the structure. On the other hand, um, you don't uh, need to cut uh, your structure in so small bits. If you want, you can give the full definition of a structure. Uh, and after the fact, you can relate it with other structure. It's also more robust because it's you, you uh, the, as a developer or a user, you fix all the operations and axioms once and for all, and you know exactly uh, what you have to inhabit. So breaking chains are voluntary in this configuration. But as uh, you can see in uh, the Ishkar paper, Competing Inheritance uh, Path in Dependent Type Theory, it introduces major breakage when uh, you use um, entailment as inference steps uh, as compared to extension. So it means that inference should be solely guided by extensions, but, uh, but that flexibility comes from entailment. In order to solve this, Hierarchy Builder design is uh, is taking the best of the two worlds, which means every structure is internally built by extensions through user-defined mixins, but factories bridge the gap by providing alternative way to instantiate mixins. Thus, uh, these factories are fixed and hence reliable. Uh, all of this is given by the five uh, only primitives of uh, higher hierarchy builder to this day. The first primitive being mixing definition. So um, the, the, it makes you it allows you to define the extra contents depending on the rest. Then the second primitive allows you to define factories, which are the alternative representation that are stable. And uh, it goes along with the third primitive that allows you f to build mixins out of factories. And by the way, any mixin is immediately promoted as a factory, and every uh, modification of your code should preserve all the mixins. If they disappear, uh, they should turn it into factories. And the fourth and fifth uh, primitives allow you to build structures based on those uh, classes. Uh, on those mixins and, and factories. And uh, the fifth uh, uh, primitive allows you to, to build instances, so to give concrete uh, instantiation or compound uh, instantiation. Let's give uh, an example uh, with, uh, is monoid, uh, with a monoid uh, structure and the is monoid mixin. So here, uh, the uh, is monoid mixin looks exactly like the unbundled class from the semi-bundled class from the beginning. Uh, and uh, the structure definition looks like the simplified packed class version. The difference is that all the subtleties of packed classes and all the inference uh, additional uh, boilerplate is taken care of by uh, hierarchy builder commands. And in particular, we can uh, use ismonoid to create an instance. Now, if we want to break down ismonoid into two pieces, so this time let's not add a structure on top like before, let's uh, carve a structure uh, in between. So we turn ismonoid into a semigroup and then the extension of a semigroup to a monoid. So it goes uh, like this. We do the same as before, but we do two structures. The first structure uh, is based on one single mixin, which is is group, where the second one is based on the mixin monoid of semigroup that adds structure to a semigroup. So it takes a semigroup as argument. Uh, and the structure will close uh, transitively uh, under dependency. So a monoid is in fact a monoid of a semigroup and a monoid uh, packed together. And we don't need to know how. And this is the first improvement of hierarchy builder. We just give the mixin. We just say the structure should use this mixin, hierarchy builder, 
uh, reconstruct the internal representation, and we don't need to know. To know. However, here, uh, is monoid, which was used to build um, the, the, the fact that Z, the integers, were monoid, is absent. So we must provide it again, as, 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 I, said, as I said before, we provide it as a factory. So um, uh, it becomes a factory with the exact same content as the previous mixing, so the same field, except this time we have a builder section which are which built which, which trivially explain how to build uh, to reconstruct the, the the new pieces from the old piece. So is monoid can be used to produce is group is semi group and can be used to produce monoid of semi group, which means it can be used to produce is the new is monoid and uh, a hierarchy builder. Uh, handles that by letting us type the exact same instance definition command as before. So now, uh, let's see how this is made possible. This is made possible thanks to CockLP. So what is LP first? LP is a programming language from the Lambda Prolog family, and it's expressive enough to represent Coq term in high order abstract syntax. Uh, which was essential not to deal with us alpha renaming and uh, the brain indices ourselves. No, uh, now CockLP is a plugin that enables uh, the use of LP as a metaprogramming language for Coq to be able to add new commands, new tactics, which would populate the environment of Coq with new definitions, inductive types, modules, uh, sections, uh, variables, context. Uh, whatever you can do with your fingers. Uh, and thanks to the capabilities of LP we meant, and CockLP, we maintain databases across files, uh, which makes uh, hierarchy builder keep track of existing records. In particular, uh, I will describe two important databases we maintain. The first is from which maps factories to mixins and the builders that turn these factories into mixins, and the second that keeps track of the dependencies of each factory. In conclusion, uh, hierarchy builder provides a high level, uh, high level comments to describe your hierarchy and provide uh, you a ready to use uh, predictable inference. Uh, it lets you amend hierarchies in a robust way which means it takes into account the evolution of the knowledge of your library, since you can start with a small library and expand it later. But also it provides various ways to instantiate structures, uh, which means it also takes into account the evolution of the knowledge of the user, which does not need to understand all possible generalization of a structure to instantiate it. Internal implementation are hidden from the user and decorrelated from the input, which improves the robustness. So now we are very close to having support for parameters uh, in structures. To we are, have begun replacing the hierarchies of MathComp with uh, hierarchy builder, and we intend to provide uh, features that would be uh, nice for. For, for people thinking of uh, uh, category theory uh, terms, like supporting morphisms and subobjects. And we also envision supporting multiple instances on the same carrier in a predictable way. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Uh, this is question time. We've got about six minutes for this. Um, hello? Hello? Let me see if I can see everybody here. Uh, Cyril, you can hear me, right? Uh, yes. Perfect. Yes. So maybe I can start with a question now that I don't yet see any any hands or 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 no panelists speaking directly. Um, 
So you talked about these mixins and factories. Um, what was not so clear to me, what, 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 what do you do when you want to build a structure out of two structures, perhaps that share a carrier or, or, or a large part of, of also structure on that carrier? Like uh, I could think of um, rings with lots of uh, extra structure or these kind of things. Um, how does the mixing and factory machinery work there? Uh, so um, you, when you want to share some structure, you make sure that all the mixings have independent content. Uh, but then uh, when someone wants to provide all the, con the, all the content uh, from different mixings at, a, a, at the same time, you make one factory for the users uh -huh. to instantiate everything they want in one go. And internally, factories are reduced and dispatched to mixings. So the, 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 topo, the, the way mixings are built uh, is uh, kept uh, internal. So no one knows from the outside the difference between a mixing and a factory. They must all look the same, except mm -hmm. internally the system knows which are, uh, are the elementary factories, which are the mixings, and how to compile big bulks of data to small uh, pieces. Does that answer the question? Maybe I'm 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 curious. So 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 if I want to do I don't know a, a semi ring or a ring, and I want to do the additive part and the multiplicative part, maybe mm -hmm. I already have a structure that has the additive part. I might want to mix in the multiplicative part, but I might might also want to start at the other end. Then it's not so clear for me, you know, <laughs> which way I want to do the extensions. In some sense, I'd like to have both to be possible, but you say this all goes to the factory part that I have different ways of. Yes. So when you design the, the hierarchy, uh, you are in charge of saying which, uh, which ways are available to, to the user to, uh, to build instances. So in the end, when you design the hierarchy, you always mention which blocks uh, you, you provide, which blocks are elementary but then it's abstracted away uh, for, uh, for the user. Right. Thank you. There is a question from Tom Hirschowitz, which um, is as follows. You're dealing with standard state-based algebraic theories. Uh, could the overall structure be extended to Piora and Hur's equational systems? Uh, Okay, I, I don't know what Fjord and her uh, equational systems are. Uh, can you uh, tell me yes. a bit more? Yes, I can tell you a bit more. Um, it's, in a sense, instead of uh, viewing algebras as algebras for an endo functor on sets, mm -hmm. you view them as algebras for an endo functor on arbitrary uh, category. category C, mm -hmm. and then they have a way of defining equations between terms. So I, I was wondering whether the, the whole uh, set of notions that you have, like extensions, um, mixings, hierarchy builders, and so on, could be uh, understood categorically in this way so that the, uh, the, your hierarchies could be built in other categories than sets. So I, I guess you could extend the tool to make sure uh, the carriers are not uh, only types, but uh, uh, I mean, we already plan to extend it to, to support carriers to be morphisms. I guess it could also be objects of a category. Right. Uh, and if the, the I guess in this kind of uh, systems, the equations are uh, proof relevant. I mean, it's not uh, proof irrelevant uh, equalities. It, uh, it has a computational content, am I right? Yes. So uh, it can be dealt with uh, just as other operators. I mean, you can, the, 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 the system, the hierarchy builder framework doesn't make a distinction between operators and axioms actually. So you can, you can uh, have a higher, I mean, non-prop uh, uh, axioms, uh, just as you can have operators. So I guess it could be adapted, yeah. This would be really cool because it, it would allow you to uh, construct the whole hierarchy of categorical structures themselves. In passing, I, I'm wondering, I don't know um, Unimath, but they do have um, a hierarchy of categorical structures. Do you know how they 
they are combined together? Uh, I never had a look. The only thing I know about Unimath is that uh, they cannot use uh, records. So they compile everything. I mean, they have to write everything in terms of sigma types. And I'm not sure how to deal with the inference and proof reconstruction part uh, in Coq, at least, uh, with uh, just sigma types. Um, I think we need... So the only inference mechanisms that work right now in, in, in Coq for, for this kind of purpose are type classes and canonical structures. And uh, both, both of them need, uh, need more than uh, sigma types. They need uh, structures, records. Yeah, I don't good know. point. Thanks. Right. Um, let me see. Just check one more time that no further question appeared. But I think this is the case. So I think we have to stop this discussion here. We thank Cyril. Thanks very thank much you. for this presentation.